research. Uh, I'll see if he's in. Whom shall I say is calling? Maureen McCormick? <laughs> Do you know that you're the same name as that actress who played Marsha Brady? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Who is this really? What's going on, Louise? This woman on the phone insists she's Marsha Brady. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Bracken can't talk to you right now. He's on the phone with Flipper. <laughs> what a crackpot. What a crackpot. This city is exciting. Dangerous. Troubled. That woman's not wearing underwear. Is that all you can think about? Food and sex? Yes. Please, focus. Look out! Oh. Louise is so sweet. I think this woman is wearing underwear. I think there's too many people in this elevator. And I think you are all idiots. It's gonna work. virgin wool come from? I don't know. The sheep that can run the fastest? <laughs> I'll get back to you. Herman, are you familiar with the actress Maureen McCormick? Sure. Well, she's in town. I'd like for you to meet her. Oh, my God. That really was her. So maybe that guy I hung up on last week really was I.P. Freely. <laughs> You know Maureen McCormick? How? Well, my sister was the teacher on the set of The Brady Bunch. No kidding! Wow, I've had a crush on her as long as I can remember. I'd love to meet her. I suppose next time my sister's in town, I could introduce you. No, I, I wasn't talking about your sister. I was talking about Marie McCormick. Oh, well, I couldn't imagine why you'd have a crush on my sister. She's uh, twice your age, three times your weight. So, why do you want me to meet Maureen? Oh, she's working on a project called Birth Control Matters. She's writing a book on it. I thought you'd be the perfect one to do the research. We're gonna meet Maureen McCormick. The first time we've actually been excited about doing research. Wrong. The first time we got excited about research was when we read that article about female enrollment at our nation's universities. Are you referring to that layout you made us read in the back of the school bus? Naked Babes of the Big Ten? Yeah, that's the one. Well, Mr. Bracken, I appreciate you thinking of me. I'd love to work on the book. Fine. I'll arrange for you to meet her tonight at McAnally's. And remember, if you do a good job on the research, you might get to co-write the book. Oh, by the way, Maureen says she was dealt with very rudely on the phone today. She didn't get the woman's name, but she said her voice was exactly like that of a cartoon character. <laughs> Joan, can I see you in the office, please? It wasn't me, Mr. Bracken. I swear, I don't know what you're talking about. Louise, what are you doing here? I'm here for the fine cuisine. Yeah, a little voice in my head tells me you're here to gawk at Maureen McCormick. Oh, so all of a sudden I'm nothing more than a little voice, huh? Well, it was either that or calling you a pathetic, wormy little weasel. That's more like it. All right, you busted me, Herman. I want to ask Maureen a few questions about acting. What kind of questions? Well, you see, my theater group is doing The Sound of Music, and I am playing Liesel, the shy but passionate 16-year-old daughter who experiences her breathless first exciting kiss with, with handsome young, young Rolf. Rolf. Right, and, and? And I want to ask her if she thinks I should slip him the old tongue. <laughs> you know, him being a Nazi and all. 
Okay, Louise, but make it quick. I don't want her to feel like she's being descended upon by a bunch of lunatics. Is Marsha Brady here yet? God. Is she here? Did you see her? What does she look like? Oh, God, I bet she still looks great. First of all, her name is Maureen, and no, she's not here yet. Oh, cool. Okay, I'll wait. Would you like to sit down? Yes, I would. How did you find out about this? I overheard uh, Hetty talking about it in the ladies' room. What are you doing in the ladies' room? Oh, oh. Well, as a journalist, I've discovered that the ladies' room is an awesome place to get the inside scoop on uh, all kinds of things. Plus, um, being in there excites me. So I got it working on two levels in there. Well, that raises several other questions that I'm not sure I want to answer. Hey, hey, hey. Don't judge me, man. <laughs> Louise, did you tell Hetty? Uh, she forced it out of me, I swear. Yeah, how did she force it out of you? She said, what's new? Hetty, I've been expecting you. Well, I knew you guys would make a scene, so I came to lend support to Maureen. I think good-looking blonde women should stick together. I agree. <laughs> Only not so much that you can't prime apart when you have to. I'm just helping her with her book. What is the big deal? The big deal is she's Marsha Brady. Could anyone hold a candle to her? I don't think so. She was beautiful. She could act. She, well, well, who is better? Who is better? Jay. Who? Jay. No, who? Jay. Who? Jay, I think you're getting a little too worked up here. You gotta remember, Marsha Brady is a fictional character. She doesn't exist. Oh, now you've done it. I think he's gonna cry. Like you didn't have a childhood crush on her. It's true, we did. When we were a kid, then we had plenty of crushes. Yeah. Remember Betty Rubble? Oh. Yeah, she had a great body, and uh, she's kind of, you know, wild with that bone in her hair. <laughs> kind of freaky. What did she see in Barney, anyway? Well, you know what they say about guys with big feet. <laughs> Of course, I had many crushes as a child, but I'm an adult now. I mean, come on. Oh, good. Here's my Shirley Temple. <laughs> hey, what about you? Didn't you have a crush on a celebrity when you were a kid? Well, I did have one crush, but you're going to think it's stupid. Yeah, who was it? Barney Rubble. <laughs> oh, there was something about those feet. Mm. <laughs> come on. I'd like you to meet Maureen McCormick. Oh, how do you do? Hi. She really does have hair of gold like her mother. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thanks, you too. Hi, I'm Louise Fitzer. Hi. Have we met before? Your voice sounds so familiar to me. Oh, I get that a lot. There are a lot of people who sound like me. <laughs> yeah, in Whoville. <clears throat> oh, yeah, um... Louise's theater group is doing The Sound of Music, and I, I believe she wanted to ask you one acting question. Oh, uh, just one, huh? Okay, then I better make it a good one. Oh, there's so many. I don't know which one to choose. Oh, this is the opportunity of a lifetime, and I can't make up my mind. Uh, uh. Louise? How do you solve a problem like Maria? Ah, what a stupid question! Listen, I'm appearing off-Broadway in the Cherry Orchard. Why don't you bring your whole theater group? And then afterwards, you and the group can ask me whatever questions you like. Oh, really? That would be great. Huh? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, well, so long. <laughs> Farewell. Auf Wiedersehen. Goodbye. <laughs> so, uh, you're, you're in a Chekhov play. Yeah. Wow. You know, I, I gotta admit, I prefer Sulu. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Nichols. They've got work to do. What? So, uh, Mr. Bracken tells me you're writing a book about birth control. You know, I, I just researched a whole series of articles on that subject. Yeah, he says you're a great worker. And if he recommends you, then I know that you're the right man to write the book with me. Well, you think a lot of him, don't you? Yeah, I do. Although when I was a kid, I was really frightened of him. Which is so weird, because his sister was so sweet. I wonder what she's up to. Um, last I heard, about 300 pounds. <laughs> 300 pounds? That's wonderful. She lost weight. Uh, when can we get together? Well, I'd like to start as soon as possible. How about tomorrow morning? Great. Uh, we can work at my hotel. I'll see you at the Manchester at 10 o'clock. Okay, great. 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 I'll see you there. Thanks. All right, we're going to get to work with Marsha. Marsha, you mean Maureen. All right, whatever. <laughs> I have to admit, 
This is a great opportunity. I'll say. I'm talking about the opportunity to research safe sex with her. Oh, no, I know. I agree. Safe sex is very important. Remember last time we didn't stretch out before sex? We tore a ligament. So? How did that go? Well, looks like I'm going to be researching her book. And if all goes well, who knows, I might even help write it. Oh, man. Oh, I envy you. Oh, God. Working with Marsha Brady? Long nights alone in her hotel room with her, working closely? Then when the moment is right, you pull the Greg Brady maneuver? The what? Greg Brady maneuver. You pretend you're yawning and you slip your arm around her. Okay, you're getting a little carried away here. I don't think of Maureen that way. Well... I do. So would you please do me a favor and put in a good word for me? Please, I'm not kidding. I'm really crazy about it. Give me a little time to get to know her, and then maybe you can meet me over to her hotel one evening. We'll go out or something. Oh, excellent. Thank you. This is so cool. Jay, either get your arm off me or buy me a drink. Oh, oh sorry. Two beers? <laughs> cover some statistics, like how 50% of the unplanned pregnancies occur in women using their contraceptives incorrectly. Now, here's the research on that. Okay. And the last chapter, I'll describe all the different types of contraceptives. Boy, a lot has really changed since you and I were in high school, huh? <laughs> yeah, when I was in high school, the method I used was abstinence. <laughs> Completely against my will, mind you, but very effective. Well... well I, uh, I guess that about wraps up the research. Okay. Thanks for all your help, Herman. <laughs> oh, now what is the matter with you? Well, I've really enjoyed the, the time that we spent with Maureen, and now that the job is over, we won't be seeing her anymore. <laughs> Can't talk to you. Hey, big guy. Can you believe how emotional she's getting about this thing with Maureen McCormick? <laughs> <laughs> She's so good! <laughs> oh, for God's sakes! You know, it's a big deal. All it means we can't write the book. <laughs> the book! <laughs> Wait a minute, maybe it's not too late. We can still write the book with her if we drop a few subtle hints. I'm not losing this, babe. I'll handle the subtle hints. Can I write the book with you, please? Well, to tell you the truth, I was going to ask you to help me. Oh, really? Working with you is real easy. And so many guys I know are so obsessed with who I used to play on TV that it's impossible to have any kind of working relationship with them. But you're not like that, Herman. I really appreciate it. Did you hear what she just said? She likes us because we think of her as Maureen. 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 See you soon, partner. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Herman. <sighs> you stole my girl. <laughs> You told me you weren't interested in Marsha. I'm not. I, I mean, I, I wasn't, but now I've gotten to know her and things are different. Oh, yeah, I guess so, because suddenly you're kissing her. Well, she kissed me first. Come on, besides, I've had a crush on her since I was a kid. Well, I had a crush on her first. Oh, <laughs> well, fine. Why don't we have a fight out on the playground after school to settle this? <laughs> well, that is fine with me. Let's go. Hey, come on, I was kidding. You know who you are. You're Doug Simpson. Who is Doug Simpson? Doug Simpson. Doug Simpson, the fair weather friend. He wanted Marsha when she was all beautiful and perfect. Then when she got hit in the nose with a football, he was out of there. <laughs> okay, Jay, you're scaring me a lot. <laughs> you're supposed to set us up. I come up here, you're making out with her. Well, can I help it if she likes me? Can I help it if I never speak to you again? Doug Simpson? <laughs> Research. 
What's the biggest bird alive? Uh, the Australian emu, which, by the way, is also the biggest bird dead. <laughs> Happy to help. Please, how about we go to McAnally's after work and knock back a few? Jay's still not speaking to you, huh? Jay and I are fine. I just think you and I don't see enough of each other. You're right. We work here in the research room ten hours a day, five days a week. We're on the Waterton soccer team together. We talk every week. All right, all right. Jay's still not speaking to me. It's really starting to bother me. Hey, is that why you were in soccer practice yesterday? Because we really missed you. There was no one there to chase after the stray balls. Ah. Hello, Maureen. Hello, Mr. Bracken. I can't believe this. I'm a grown woman, and I still feel funny calling you anything but Mr. Bracken. You and his wife. You know, I've known you since you were a little girl. It's only natural you should call me by my surname. On the other hand, my wife is afraid I'll lock her out in the rain again. So, did you speak with your publisher? Yes. Well... Herman, I think you're a great guy, and I really hope that we can still see each other, but he wants to go with someone with more experience. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I understand. What do you mean, we understand? Well, she tried to get us the job. We can't blame her if it didn't work out. That's true. Besides, a lot of good came out of this. We met a really great woman who's smart. And sexy. And knows about birth control. Wait a minute. I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to snow me. <laughs> so I'll forget about the book. And we'll continue seeing her. Well, all right. Look, the book is a thing of the past, but we can still make this relationship work. It's all right. Your points are well taken. It's just going to be a long time before I cheer up. Getting icy in here! <laughs> it didn't take as long as I thought. Well, I hope the new writer works out for you. And, you know, listen, if you're not doing anything for dinner... Great. Hey, I thought I might find you here. We should get started. I'd like to get the first chapter done before the weekend. Sounds great. Jay, he's the new writer? Yeah, I found out they wanted a writer with experience, and I uh, called upstairs and volunteered. Um, it's probably going to be a late night. We should get back to your hotel room and get started. I just got to grab a few things. I'll meet you downstairs, okay? Okay. Herman, are you okay with your friend Jay helping me with the book? Oh, yeah, of course I am. No. Jay's a great writer. Son of a bitch hack, I'm gonna kill him. Herman, I know this is hard for you, but the truth is Jay does have more writing experience than you. And you wouldn't have gotten the job anyway. So it's not like he stole it from you. Well, I never said he stole it from me. And you'll still be seeing Maureen, right? <sighs> I suppose. So you're overreacting. Well, maybe it's not Jay's fault. I mean, it's not like Jay cooked up this plan to steal Maureen away from you. That's <laughs> right, I'm being ridiculous. Although Jay has cooked up stranger plans to get women. And he is crazy about Maureen. Well, that doesn't mean Maureen's going to be interested in him. Yeah, but he does not a sweet talk a woman. <laughs> you ought to know. <laughs> and he is really good looking. Boy, is he ever. And they'll be working in the hotel room. Jay's humped her. I ought to know. All right, son of a bitch hack, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> They're right. Jay did this to steal Maureen from us. I bet the two of them are somewhere laughing at us right now. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. You should see the way he runs when he's chasing after a soccer ball. <laughs> I'll bet. That's just not true. I'll get that. I'll show you what they're doing. Oh, Jay. What a clever maneuver. This is breaking my heart. Jay is stealing Marsha. I'm gonna kill him. No, no, no. Remember, revenge is a dish best served cold. Yeah. <laughs> There's food? You know what? I think I'm gonna head home. Are you gonna be okay? Yeah. Yeah, Louise, I'm fine. I, uh, you guys have really helped me through this, okay? I'm gonna be all right. I think we really talk some sense into him. Yeah, I think he feels much better. <laughs> He's going over there right now to make a fool of himself, isn't he? Big time. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Why are we doing this? Because Jay's in there stealing Marsha. Now, we're not sure about that. Well, where else could he be? Who is it? Oh, it's Herman. Oh, did I wake you? No, actually, I was up. Notice how she's not inviting us in? I think that's a little suspicious, don't you? I bet Jay's in there right now, sitting in the hot tub and drinking champagne. Why don't you come in? 
Notice how she's inviting us in? Mm-hmm. Uh, she's shrewd, all right, but she's not fooling anyone. Mm-hmm. So, I guess you're here because Jay told you what happened. No, no, he didn't tell me, but I saw it coming. I'm sorry, Herman. I mean, you know how Jay is. I couldn't help it. Aha! I had to throw him out of here. What? Well, we were working on the book when suddenly he starts yawning. The next thing I know, he was trying to put his arm around me. When I told him I wasn't interested, he started blabbering out how he had some childhood crush on me. And at one point, he actually called me Marsha. Can you believe it? Oh, that is pathetic. I mean, the last thing I want is some guy who sees me as a television character. Herman, I'm so glad you're not like that. We've got to tell her the truth. We've got a good thing going here. Why spoil it with the truth? If we hope to have any relationship with her at all, we have to be totally honest with her. Well, if we're going to be totally honest, can we tell her until we were 12, we needed our mommy to help? Not that honest. You know, the truth is there's a little part of me that does think of you as Marsha Brady. Oh, no. Not you, too. Well, I know, it's stupid, but, you know, when you kissed me, all of a sudden I was 12 years old again. And when I was 12, the woman in my life was Marsha Brady. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to be honest. Are you ever going to be able to think of me as who I really am? Oh, I'd sure like to give it a try, because that's the person I'm really interested in. Well... Look, look, Maureen, I, I know that you're going to be in town for another week. Maybe we could uh, just see how it goes. Herman, it's late. Oh. <laughs> Tomorrow, it's the Wild West, Fox style. Briscoe takes on the world's first motorcycle gang and kicks some biker butt on an all-new Briscoe County Junior, followed by an all-new episode of The X-Files, tomorrow on Fox.